Hi everyone, I'm Emma from Soul Stirring Branding and today I'm excited to be doing the second in my series of free coaching. And today we've got the amazing artist, Faith Evan Sills, uh, to review how exciting her work is absolutely stunning. Uh, if you're not familiar with it already, um, I can't wait to share it with you. Uh, and I think that this uh, video will be helpful for anyone who is an artist or creative person. Um, because some of these things that I'll be talking about, I think are really fundamental things that um, a lot of people will find helpful. Yay. Okay. So let me dive straight into it and share my screen so you can see uh, Faith's gorgeous work. Here it is here. Uh, this is her website homepage. I'm just going to scroll down so you can kind of get a little bit of a sense of who she is, her gorgeous work. Oh my goodness. Like it's just so beautiful. Go. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Okay, so that's the bottom there. Let's scroll all the way up. And this is her Instagram. So you can really get a sense of her work here for sure. Okay, so let's go straight into it. So, uh, hi, Faith. Um, thanks for agreeing to do this video. So, one of the key things that I think stands out when I go onto the home page is that, okay, what is your intention? for this website? Is it so that you can build your profile as an artist or is it so that you can serve your audience and you can sell? Uh, because right now I would say that looking at this first section, at least like the first couple of sections here, this is very much get around you. Um, and traditionally we want to approach it that your ideal client and student, um, your visitor is the hero of this story. And that might seem kind of strange, right? Because, you know, you're an artist, you're sort of thinking like, you know, and, and obviously this is, once again, this is the second personal brand where we've got um, the person's business being their, per their personal name, like the, uh, the previous video was this in the same boat. So you're sort of thinking, okay, this is about me. And it is absolutely. But at the same time, we really, I would really recommend that we gear the beginning of this a little bit more around the person who is visiting you, the person who was landing on this page. Like you talked about how, um, you love to connect with women on a creative level and find a deep satisfaction, not only in your own uh, paintings, but sharing your ideas with other women and seeing them get sparked with this um, creative bug, let's say. Um, and you said she's a woman who longs to bring more creativity and authenticity into her life, who feels cre creative calling and is ready to de dedicate her time and money into her own creative growth. Like, wow, that's really powerful. And, you know, landing on this website, it's like, do we really get that impression? You know, because what is the first thing we see? We see your gorgeous artwork. Obviously, that's really important. It's like that inspiring factor that um, gets us sort of like in the mood and the vibe, that sort of thing, seeing your face. But really, we don't get, you know, so then section two is, you know, here's who I am. I create, uh, I was created to express beauty. I'm an artist. I'm this, I'm that. You can learn more about me here. And it's only when we really get right into, um, and even this is like, this is my passion. So it's still really talking about you. Um, and then we get to this line here. Are you ready to embrace the creativity you were, um, you know, you were made for? Like, wow, like that is really, this is the message that I would really love to see up here. Um, really speaking directly to that woman who's in that place, you know, longing to bring more creativity and authenticity into her life. Like, how can you speak to her from the get go? Um, so that when someone lands on your website, I guess primarily, you know, we all see ourselves as the heroes of our own story, right? So we're sort of going about life, you know, wondering how can I improve my life? How can I solve my problems? Yes, we're curious about people that inspire us like you, like other artists or other um, personal brands. But I think it's all got to start with the sort of what's in it for me uh, question. So I feel like that is like a fundamental thing that I saw that was missing from like this opening section of 
the homepage. And I know that you said that, you know, one of your key questions that you're wanting to uh, make the answer today is um, that you have so many different offerings from your online classes to your international retreats, to your book, and you want a clear way to express that. And I feel like that really needs to come from the beginning, you know, because you're using the space to to show inspirational images and talk about yourself, that doesn't really solve the problem that you're aiming for, which is to clearly express the breadth of what you do um, and help people to understand what you've got on offer so that they can sort of see where they fit, right? So um, that would be like a really good starting place, I think, in terms of, um, you know, maybe it's not that you've got a slider because then it's kind of sort of tricky in terms of, um, where to place the image, I guess, unless there's a different marketing message on each slide. But normally I avoid the sliding because people sort of get this banner blindness, they say. Um, these days, I guess, we're sort of more focused on one static image um, and the ability to scroll. So, um, you know, maybe it is just picking one image um, that you want to use. Like this one is really powerful, that really bright splash of colour. Um, or one where we can see you might be good as well. Um, or even this one's really beautiful. Uh, and it's got the, the space that you could potentially put that message in there. So I would love to see a beautiful image, you know, so we don't want to lose that, but at the same time, I would love to see, are you ready to embrace the creativity, you know, you were made for, and then maybe you could say, you know, what are the different ones you've got online classes. So online painting classes is I think it's mostly painting classes but not all painting classes so um online creativity classes let's have a look so most of these are painting um and then yeah there's like this one's about creativity but I mean they're, they're, it's pretty much all painting except for one so I could think you can easily say painting um so like maybe like there's a little thing where it's like online painting classes, a little, you know, bullet dot type thing, um, international retreats, little dot. Um, you've only got one book, so what would you write for that? Um, you know, maybe book. I don't know. <laughs> Books, we can even say. Um, but just kind of like that little snapshot or that could even, that little snapshot could even go um, below the logo as a tagline. That could be another option. But that would be a really easy way to just like present that snapshot so that we can clearly see, um, okay, this is what you do. Like that is expressed from the um, moment someone lands on your website. Because yeah, it's sort of in the um, menu, I guess, but people are probably not going to be super focused on that. Um, it probably wouldn't stand out as much just because there's a lot of text going on there, like the home, the connect, all the other stuff that sort of um, would distract, let's say. So, yeah, so I think that, you know, just really thinking about how you can um, re probably um, definitely this section here and then, I mean, even, it's not to say that you can't speak about what, who you are and what you do, but I just really want to make sure that it starts off with the what's in it for me, you know, as the reader, um, you know, how are you here to serve, to help these women get back into their creativity? I really want that to be addressed first, and then we can go into um who you are and what you do as well as kind of like secondary to that. So I don't know how that feels to you. Um, and, and I'm sure that with a lot of artists and creative types, like we do kind of imagine that our web in our websites, like it's going to be about us. Um, so that might be a slightly different way of thinking about it, but I think that that would be really helpful. Um, the next thing that um stood out to me um I mean there's quite a few different things here but um maybe we can talk about the logo next like I love that you've brought in uh the um painterly element to it and that natural feel and the beautiful colors coming through but something about it to me feels like you could go you, you could take this further I think is what I want to say like in terms of the um like typography the fonts um, something about it feels a little bit um, like it lacks a sort of soul, if you know what I mean. Like it's very 
um, sort of almost mechanical in the feeling, like just a very straight up and down, quite um, quite tall letter forms, like kind of more con a more condensed style. I don't know. It just kind of feels like it's at odds with the feeling of your brand, like you talked about. You want that um, warmth, that beautiful bohemian aesthetic. Like I don't know. I don't know that that is bringing that across to me in terms of the wording. So I wonder if that's something that you might want to play with a little bit to sort of explore um, how you can um, uh, adapt that and, and, and evolve it. The second thing is obviously the brush stroke. Now, I just feel like it's really big. It's really dominant, right? Like it kind of almost takes over the logo. I love that we're getting that gorgeous pop of color, but maybe um, it can be slightly brought down or there might be a different way that you can evolve it so it's not um, so dominant there in the section, if that makes sense. So yeah, so I would be curious if you did want to evolve that logo, see where you can take it to bring in a little bit more of that, um, the bohemian, um, what did you say? Beautiful bohemian aesthetic. Yeah, playing around with uh, maybe pairing fonts or doing something to bring in a little bit more emotion and personality in there rather than fully relying on that brush stroke to bring that energy through. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to hear what you think about that. The next thing that came to mind here, I just thought this was interesting. Um, I really saw this line, lover of bright color. And I was like, okay, we can definitely see that coming through in like some of your, um, like this photo, for example, like, wow, so powerful. And then even like in your, you know, your artwork and the various, um, colors that we can see coming through here like obviously it's not all bright so you've got a bit of a mix um but I just thought it was interesting that you chose this to be sort of the core uh color of your um branding let's say like it's the main like we've obviously got a little bit of this sort of turquoisey aqua color and then we've got this sort of like um clay type color here which i feel like um obviously matches really well with the photo that the clothing that you wore in that photo so i'm not sure if it came from that or you just really love that color like i really love that color too and it's quite uh, similar to um, a color that I use in my own branding, but I'm just curious, um, like does, when we talk about bright color here, to me, this is more subdued. And I know that you're probably thinking, I don't want like this really bright, um, box because it's like going to be overpowering and too much the worst. So I get that side of things. So it might just be the case that you want to bring in a really beautiful, maybe, um, cream or, um, you know, a, a a slightly off-white color here or a really light pink or something like that and then um we have little details that bring in the pops of the bright um like this definitely does feel warm and I know you did say that you wanted that warmth to come through um but it's just in, I just thought it was interesting lover of bright color and like where's the bright color like I see bits of brightness here. I guess the difference with this brush stroke is that it has that variation of color from the pinks to um, sort of the lighter tones. And this is even more of a kind of like getting into a peachy sort of orangey color here. So it is a little bit different to this tone here, but as you can see, like it's in this text here, it's in this section here, and it's then we've got the pops of the pink and the gold obviously coming through here. So I feel like this almost has a different vibe to this section here, for example, where we're really feeling um, a lot more subdued and muted. And even the photo is like almost muted because it's black and white, right? Uh, whereas the, these photos here, they feel so rich, um, which I think is interesting. And if it was me just hearing what you're saying, um, and, and with the sense of um, your, you know, looking at your work, like obviously it's not all super bright colors, but, and you do have um, some more subdued colors as well, but I would be curious about whether you can infuse more of these beautiful pops of the bright colors, if that is really central to your work, like really think about that. Um, 
I would love to see as well as that, like maybe one of the ways that you can do that is to infuse more of your own artwork into the sections. So obviously you've got all of these beautiful details and I wonder if you can bring in some of these elements in terms of like your watercolor work and, you know, bringing them in as, as textural elements or little, little snippet bits on the side or like, you know, maybe it, um, oops, like maybe it comes in a little tiny detail that goes on the corner or little ways that we can pull out your um, artwork. Like that's what I do oftentimes or pretty much all the time, I should say actually, with the artists that I work with. It's like pulling out what elements can we draw from within your work and actually pull an element out and bring it onto the page like as a little detail. Like I would love to see, um, obviously this is not your own artwork here. I don't think I think this is just random graphics it, like obviously it looks slightly different in style but you know what I mean like bringing in these little touches that can go in corners and different details or this would be gorgeous like to pull apart to take the background off it and and maybe overlay it with different things like there's so much that you can do here and it's like um, it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity I guess in terms of really being able to infuse the beauty of what you do not just in photos but really bringing the elements in as sort of layering items to bring more depth to the website without going overboard. Like I don't want you to go crazy uh, so that it feels really messy, but I would love to see how you can approach that because that's really exciting, I think. Okay, so um, the next thing I really noticed here is that I feel like this is too much. Like um, I think it's the combination of the size of the text and the uppercase. So my tip for anyone um, listening would be like, be really careful with your usage of uppercase, just because it's like, it does present as kind of shouty and like it, it does become harder to read. So I think that, you know, if you had like two lines in uppercase, like great, that can look really nice. But I think having this quantity of uppercase is gonna be too much. Like to me, when I look at that, I'm not inclined to read it because I'm like, it's just too, it's too much in my face, if that makes sense. And that's a real shame. Um, so I would definitely approach this section if you are going to be using it um, to, you know, go sentence case. So, you know, just your regular, you know, non uppercase and, um, and maybe even reduce the size a little bit there because it's a really tall section and there's a lot going on. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that that would be a good idea. And then, as I said, really just thinking about, um, you know, this is your passion. You know, this is really what we want to be front and center. And then we can introduce you like as the guide of these people who are the hero really of the message of this website. Um, okay. Then we get into your offerings here. So you've got kind of the four, I would, I'm wondering if maybe you can make that like four across in one, you know, like all four are in one line so that we're able to um, see that a bit bigger or maybe that's not the issue. Maybe the issue is that I feel like the photos are so dominant and the text is so small. So once again, I feel like this is all feeding into this idea of, your work is the hero um, and the serving and selling is like the sidekick or the secondary. Like it, it, it's, it's almost being hidden. Like, I'm just like, wow, beautiful artwork, lovely photos. Um, and I'm not really reading the text, but I guess that's really important to um, the, like to you serving and selling. Um, which is like fundamental to you running your business and also to your purpose, which is to help women to get in touch with their creativity. Um, so I would definitely want to pump that up, make that more visible um, so that it's not getting lost here. So maybe that is playing around with color or using different font styles or something or sizing um, maybe not having, maybe having a little bit more clear space so it's not like the photos and the text are really jammed up quite close together. Uh, but the photos are gorgeous, really sets the scene. I love all that. Love this message, as I mentioned. Um, 
Then we get to this section here. And this one, as I kind of touched on before, is really puzzling to me because I mean, obviously like your vibe, it's so, it, it is so vibrant, it's colorful, it has depth, like, um, and it's really, like, I don't see you, you using um, black and white anywhere else. Because obviously you want to showcase like your beautiful colors and everything that you do. So it probably wouldn't make a whole lot of sense normally to use black and white so I'm curious why that decision was made and I would be really wanting to see you um really evolve the section to um bring in like the vibrancy that we see here and with your artwork like we, how can we infuse that into the section I'd also say that we've got a lot of copy going on in this section it's almost once again too much um, so you've got the five rituals for creative growth. And then you also say here, the five rituals for creative growth. So it's almost like, is this a double up here? I, I don't know that we need so much of this. So maybe, you know, if the text is inside the image section, then maybe we've just got like, grab my free ebook, you know, simple tips to help you stay calm and present and inspired. Um, and maybe we cut this section entirely, make this full, um, square here, um, a really big vibrant image with the text. Um, I would be inclined to see that. And then if I recall, if I click onto the section here, yeah, I get taken to convert kit. And I feel like obviously you're using um, this, was it convert kit? I, I think you're, yeah, here, here it is. So you're obviously using a, um, uh, a landing page template maybe from your email newsletter program uh, but but then like the fonts feel different they feel really um thick so it, it, it just kind of feels like a different vibe even the color is different I think like if we look at this is your normal color here and you've also got this sort of peachy color um but this is a different color again so I'm just kind of getting a little bit of mixed messaging in terms of what your color palette is Additionally, when we see the section here, it feels like it's even further um, muted or, or, or um, like the opacity is, is taken down from what we see here. So I'm just curious why that happened. I just feel like um, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. And I would just love to see that sense of magic and inspiration. I feel like we just need that color and we need more of you in this and that consistency. So that's another, I guess, key um, takeaway um, and something that I noticed with um, uh, with Jess, the previous person that I reviewed, um, she also had a, um, this was a sales page and it was, um, I think it was on Teachable, was it? Um, so another sort of external third party platform. I guess the issue with using these third party platforms um, is that it may not be as easy to um, ensure that your brand aesthetic, um, the look and the feel is actually translated across to that touch point. Not to say that it's impossible, because I'm sure that there are ways around it. Like we can't always use our brand fonts because let's say in email newsletters, like obviously um, the scope of, of fonts that we can use is quite limited. So in that case, I just say use something really simple and elegant, you know, don't try and use anything that's like too quirky or different that's going to stand out as being quite different to the rest of your um, website and other brand fonts. Like just go really simple if you um, have a really limited um, scope of options, basically. Um, but yeah, sometimes there's certain features that these third party programs will give you like generic icons and things like that, that you have to use. Um, and I get it, you know, like sometimes we can't do everything within our website for whatever reason, maybe the way that your website is set up, or maybe it's just um, quick and easy to use these programs. I get that as well. Um, but it is, you know, something to consider maybe when you do have the budget to, um, be able to invest in making sure that everything feels aligned, whether that you are able to do that within these programs you're using or um, whether you are able to actually build it all in within your own website, which I would personally recommend only because obviously we've been taken off site here. I don't know what happens when you submit. Do you get taken back? Let me just double check. 
does this open to a new page? See, no, it doesn't. So I don't want people to click on this, sign up, and then they don't explore the rest of your site. Because the whole purpose, like I think I said for Jess's website as well, we want to keep people on your website. We want to keep them engaged. We want them to be exploring every inch that you offer and all these exciting elements. And when you have these external third-party links that don't open as a new tab, for starters, you know, um, you may lose people, you know, inadvertently that you don't want to lose, of course. So that's another really important factor here, but I would really love to see this section um, adjusted. Um, and even here, you can see the colors different. Like this is even more muted again, this section here compared to your standard um, sort of clay, pink clay type color. So um, when colors are just slightly off, like they're almost the same, but just slightly off, it does feel like a mistake to me. So I'm curious, um, you know, what happened there with that. Um, but I reckon we, we redesigned this whole section, to be honest. Um, it sounds like an amazing ebook. I'm sure it is. I want people to feel that inspiration and that magic. Now we get to your offerings, basically. So I know that you had mentioned, like, pulling us back to your question, which was like, um, you have so many offerings. How do you present that in a clear way? Um, I'm just wondering whether this section, like if you do want to have this section, I would make it quite short. Like this is quite a lot of space it's taking up. You can make a little opt-in section that's actually quite short in height so we're not creating that space. And then once again, maybe if this section goes over four, then um, we're not creating that space. And then if this section's not as long, like, you know, so it's taking us a really long time, I guess, to get to what your, class, your upcoming classes are. And I don't know if it's a case of people will hop on your website to see like what's coming up or do most people find out about upcoming stuff through your socials and your email uh, newsletters perhaps that's the case, but I would still think maybe like we can make these adjustments to shorten everything up a little bit so that people do get to those classes a little bit faster. Um, the other thing I noticed is that like the first two are your retreats and then the next three are your um, online instant access classes. Now to me, visually I mean I can see the difference in terms of the graphic like these two look like they're a set and these two with the sort of um, green layer here look like they're a set but overall when I first hopped on this website I didn't really pick up instantly that oh okay these are the retreats and these are the e-courses so it might be something that you want to consider uh, to kind of create more segmentation or clarity around these are the retreats, these are the e-courses because um, potentially different people are looking for different things. Like this is something they can jump on straight away with the e-courses. The retreats are going to be something obviously more of a high ticket item that people need to plan and really think about. So I definitely think that's important to make that um, a little clearer uh, and that should help you with um, presenting your offerings like you're wondering about. Um, the other thing I noticed is that, um, to me, the width of this text is too wide. So that's a really important consideration and something that everybody can take something from. Like you don't want your text in any case, whether it's a website, whether it's um, an ebook, whether it's, um, I don't know, and usually it's not so important for social media because it's quite a, you know, small square, but um, we've got to be really conscious of the width of our text because the eye has to travel from left to right, back to left again. And um, you don't want it to be, um, I, I guess the wider it is, the more laborious it feels as a reading experience. And it's not something that we consciously think about. Uh, it's more of just this intuitive feeling like, oh, I don't know if I want to read this because it's, why I mean I don't even know if that relates to anybody else but to me when I look at this I'm like it feels too wide and just something doesn't feel professional about it to me because it's too wide so I would really love to cut that down um and maybe like um standardize the spacing so the small space we see under here I'd like that to be similar here 
Um, but it's just, I guess one thing I notice is it's a lot of text here. Um, so, and I know that the heading is in this image, but if people are looking at this section here, maybe we can simplify this. Um, so maybe it just says um, art retreat in Costa Rica. I mean, you do repeat the dates here. So maybe it's now open, our last retreat sold out. I mean, maybe that information could potentially be below. Like how can we make a really clear title? I would probably reduce the words there a little bit. So um, maybe Costa Rica Art Retreat 2023 registration open. Maybe it could be as simple as that. And I know that this one is a bit more simplified here. Um, which makes it a little bit easier to read for sure. Um, but yeah, I think there's something about this section that doesn't feel right in terms of the design. A few key things. One, I sort of feel like the line doesn't align with the content. So we've got the, the image sections here and there's a gap in the line and the text, it doesn't align to the text either. So to me, that's one element that's sort of jarring me. Then it's like, um, I guess the, the text is sort of lining up to the image here. And then we have this button that's separate to that. Also, we've got a lot of black going on here. How do you normally do your text? Okay, so, so we've got the gray here and we've, we don't really have any black. Oh, there's a little bit of black text here. It just feels like really bold with the black. I'm just wondering whether we want to use the, the buttons here as an opportunity to bring in a little bit more color and maybe the headings because color is your whole thing, right? Um, so yeah, I just feel like this sort of needs a bit of a rejig. I think it's going to read a lot clearer if it is a little bit more narrow. And maybe it is like um, upcoming, upcoming um retreats and we've got one in one column and one in another column so we've got a two column layout where we can kind of skim and scan that and we can see it really clearly then it's like e-courses and we've got one two three you've got three right now um so whether it's a layout of three or you decide to put in four because obviously you've got the option um another thing here is that in turn like these two i actually really love the design of maybe you can bring a little um shadow or a little brush stroke in photoshop of like a black um just a black brush that you then um take the opacity down so it's really really subtle like that's something that i supply to all my clients it's really handy to just bring that extra layer of contrast because there's just a few areas like here you'd probably need more of a white brush i mean but at the at the end of the day like i can read that that's okay i think it could be slightly improved like how the text goes on here. That's a little challenging to read, but overall it's not too bad. But I think this has a really nice vibe, um, but like it's a sort of a different look here. You're bringing in different fonts. Like we've got this font here. We've got the script font here. We've got this sort of more uh, condensed style here. This is a different font here. So it's sort of like, how many fonts are we actually bringing through? And then we've got, you know, like these styles here. We've got this, like if I counted up all of the fonts that you're using, I reckon there's going to be heaps of different ones between everything. And it might just be that, you know, like you never really defined um, the, the fonts that you're actually going to be using as your core brand fonts. Or sometimes people get bored of their fonts and then they just keep evolving it. Like I can't really speak to anything within your, oh no, there is, I was going to say, I didn't think there were, you had any sort of branded Instagram posts, but it looks like you did have one there. Like this one, it looks like you have participated in someone else's events so they've done the branding for that. So I'm going to ignore that one. Um, we scroll down where was the one I saw yeah so we've got this here which I reckon is different fonts again potentially like that 50% off or maybe that 50% off is this font here but overall what I'm seeing is too many fonts I would say and I really want to see that um, be condensed down so that you are known for the particular style that you're using and not that you're just kind of pulling plucking fonts out of thin air or you know just going by the whim of what inspires you I get that I get the temptation 
Um, but I always say to clients, it's a really slippery slope when it comes to like fonts or colors. You know, people sort of think, oh, I'll just add one more color because I need it for a particular offering. I just want this, you know, pop of bright pink here. Or I'm going to kind of like, you know, introduce little things here and there based on what Canva template I see or whatever the case may be. It's this slippery slope. You think I'll just do it once and then um, and then you've lost your um, consistency overall. So it is a really tricky situation. Um, so let me just pause for one second. All right, I'm back. I just had to take a quick phone call. I can't really remember where I was up to um, and if I mentioned this or not, but I think I was in the middle of trying to say that um, when I look at these two images here, I feel like they are kind of similar. Like I know that there's different paintings like and different pieces of artwork here, but I almost wonder whether you could do something slightly different to sort of differentiate. I think that um, having the text over the photos in this way um, makes it a little bit harder to read the text. So there's just a lot going on here. And then the images look the same. So I guess what we are wanting here with this, um, this section as a whole is to ensure that people can easily differentiate between the different offers. And right now I feel like there's just too much similarity. Like this one, I can definitely see a difference. I do feel like it could probably like, these layouts could probably read clearer if we um, if it was designed in a different way so that we didn't have the faint overlay and the um, imagery in the photo sort of bleeding through into the text, etc. So I reckon we need to sort of rejig this whole section here to just make it um, clearer and um, and easy to skim and scan would be the next thing. So something I bring up all the time, people skim and scan, they're not going to read the whole thing. We need that clarity. We need to reduce um, some of these headings as well, like we talked about here. Another one I picked up on is this call to action is super long. Like if it was me, I would be really trying to reduce those call to action button word, words to be maybe like, I don't know, like one, two, three, four, like four, five, maybe at the most. Um, like I don't, I mean, this one's kind of on the long side. Maybe re, like re, re, reserve your spot on this adventure. Okay, like, but then obviously this exciting adventure is that one. And then, um, and then this gets even longer here. I would just be careful about that because we just want to make it quick and easy. If I look at a call to action button that's that long, I'm actually not reading that right now. I'm just kind of like, it's just kind of like, well, too much information, right? So I would love to just see it really super clear. Like I'm ready. Like it doesn't have to be, like don't make it any harder for people. We just want people to be able to go, yep, that's me. I want to just dive straight into this. Um, not like, oh, I have to read something, <laughs> you know? It's like, let's just keep it simple. That would be um my recommendation here. I'd also be careful about once again, this quantity of uppercase. I feel like that's almost a little bit too much for me again. Um, and maybe we can pair that back. So I just really want to make sure um, that like I want people to be able to see in a snapshot if we're looking at your courses, like how, it, oops, I put something. Um, how are they different from each other? So one is luscious, luscious layered treescapes. The other is luscious layered landscapes. Okay, so I can see that they're slightly different, but I mean, to me, the artwork looks like quite similar. So I'm like, okay, so what's the difference between treescapes and landscapes? Because obviously landscapes might have trees in them too. I don't know. Like, it's like, how do we convey that differentiation to help someone understand which one to choose because if everything looks really similar then um, that's going to be hard to clarify so let's have a quick look at all three and then the third one is cityscape so I feel like that looks visually different to me um going through all of my tips tricks and strategies for creating richly layered cityscape paintings okay all my tips, tips, and strategies for creating richly layered. See, it's like you're repeating all of the language. Do you notice that you're doing that? It's like very repetitive guiding. Like you're saying the exact same thing here. And the only difference is treescape, landscape, 
cityscape. It's like, what is the point in repeating text? Like it could just be like, um, all of my courses guide you through all my tips and tricks and strategies for creating richly layered paintings. You know, do you want to learn about treescapes? Do you want to learn about landscapes? Do you want to learn about cityscapes? Which one um, inspires you? Which one do you feel intuitively guided towards? Like that would be so much clearer than repeating that copy three different times, if that makes sense. Um, and then everything is instant and forever access online self-paced. Like this is also repeating. I just feel like this repetition is actually not helping with clarity. It's not really helping with anything. So maybe it's worth like having a head up where we say, you know, um, everything's a brand new. Is it still brand new? How long has it been running for? I'd be curious. Um, you know, because sometimes we forget to update these things as well. So maybe it's like a big header, lusciously layered um, painting workshops, um, instant and forever access, online and self-paced. Um, you know, do we need, you know, every bit of information? Like we can keep it relatively simple. People can dive in to learn more about each one, right? So where was I? Um, so yeah, so maybe it's like lusciously layered painting e-courses, um, instant access, online self-paced. You know, which one do you feel in, uh, intuitively guided to, um, to paint? Treescapes, landscapes, cityscapes. Um, and I don't know that it needs the text over the photo necessarily, but you could, um, or it could just be text underneath. Like what is going to be most powerful, I guess? because uh, I just don't want too much competing information with this two-column approach. So it could be that we've got, because now I think we're going maybe towards um, three columns instead of one big section to help people skim and scan, especially because I feel like there is a common thread here as indicated by your repetition in the copy. So I would really love to like build on that by um just reducing that copy and showing how they kind of fit as a set. Um, and okay, so here's treescapes. I'm assuming they're all the same price as they are. Um, so I'd be curious, yeah, why choose treescapes? Why choose landscapes? Why choose cityscapes? Like, do we answer that question or do you just assume that people will just have an intuitive feeling, which they might do. I'm just having a look at all three. Treescapes. What is it about treescapes, you know, that's really exciting or that people will find fun? Treescapes, lands. Oh, no. Did I just do two? Okay, that was two treescapes. Um, <laughs> this is why I feel like I'm going a little crazy here. Uh, okay, so this is landscapes now. Um I'm just trying to read if you are clarifying why this one, you know? When does it start? What is included? Developing inspiration. Okay, so it seems, oh no, gathering inspiration. I'm just curious, yeah. Like my curiosity as someone reviewing all of your online classes here, Zoom is getting in the way. Let me just grab it. Okay, so this is your classes learning page. And I do quite like the way, by the way, that you're segmenting it by live and instant access. Um, I think that that's helpful. Um, but there's a lot, like design-wise, this feels like there's a lot going on. You're pretty much using the same fonts. That's a different font here. And this one looks completely different as well, like in terms of style. I just feel like you could clean this up. It's, it's, it's feeling busy, isn't it? Between like the, obviously the rich detail of your gorgeous photos and then the fonts over the top um, and they're um, you know, like quite chunky as it is, you know, but some contrast issues sometimes. So you're trying to pull in the, um, the little, you know, green, bluey green squares to, um, give you more contrast there, but it's sort of adding to the detail. I don't know. It's not a uniform style. It feels like, you know, we've got 
maybe you intentionally did this green thing to indicate that these were a sort of a little set of some kind because now I'm just noticing that those are in one style then we've got tide pool paintings abstract bliss yeah like to me I would be kind of wanting to know like why like is there a reason why people pick these or is it just kind of like that looks interesting. Um, maybe there isn't a particular reason for any of this and it's just kind of like what you feel drawn to. Um, but yeah, it is kind of like, what, what is the difference? How can we convey that? Like you would, you, um, uh, treescapes is right for you if, you know, you are a lover of nature that might apply to landscapes as well I'm just curious like obviously you made the intentional decision to to create these different courses um what inspired that and what did you feel like was missing with one that you could then address with the other it's like help people there's so many options it's so exciting um it, everything looks amazing um so so but helping people to decide what's right for them um, is quite interesting. Um, the other thing, I wonder if any of your courses, like is everything just super easy to, um, for people to do, like in terms of you can pick this up um, even if you have no experience. Like for example, I have another artist client of mine, Jane Davenport, look her up. Um, and she had, um, where is your courses? Yeah, so she has various different ones where, um, oh, maybe I'll just go straight to the page, um, workshops. Let's just view all. So this is the lovely Jane Davenport, who is also um, and uh, does online classes for art. And what we did here is having a look at um, the different stages of being an artist for her. So, so Help Me Find My Creative Feet was the beginner's workshops. And these were the ones that were really designed for people who um, were maybe newer to art, not very confident, and then it progressed to intermediate um, and then advanced level. So that might not be suitable for you. I don't know whether um, everything, like maybe with yours, everything is very um, kind of organic and, and, and maybe not so um, super technical as being able to draw a face and things like that. So, so maybe it's not applicable, but um, it's quite interesting to look at ways where we can go, okay, we've got like 20 workshops here. How do we segment it so that um, uh, people can see what's suitable for them instead of like what Jane's previous layout was where it was like, here's everything on the page, right? And then you go, oh, well, which one's right for me? I don't know, maybe I'll just try you know, one of these ones that's more complicated, you know, without knowing it and then you get lost. So I don't know whether that's applicable to you because obviously you've both got different styles to how you work. Um, but I do think that this is quite a nice example of like doing that more summarized layout um, and letting, I guess, the image speak so that, um, you know, and having the text maybe a little bit more segmented to create something that feels a little bit more easy to read in uniform um, without feeling um, too uninspiring at the same time, if that makes sense. So let's go back to yours here. Do you see the difference here in terms of how this is like, whoa, it's a lot, I think, because the text is over the images and the images are quite detailed. Um, if we like do a little bit of a cross check, like this feels like more like a little bit of a neater approach, I would say. So it's just something to keep in mind. But as you go through this process of trying to explain the different elements of what you do, um, that it could be worth considering. Um, another thing is that obviously you've got a couple here that are combo courses, like a bundle. Um, I wonder if those should be put separately, just because, you know, obviously we're repeating things that are single workshops. What if those were maybe a separate, um, a separate section, just so that we can kind of really clearly see, okay, here are the, um, the different options. Um, instant access, this popular breakthrough class. So obviously this is the only one I think where you don't list, oh, 
and then the bundles. So sometimes you're listing the price, sometimes you're not. Um, is there a strategy behind that? Maybe this is a more in-depth course. Yeah, it's just really looking at how we can pull this all together. So somebody who is, you know, looking at your classes for the first time can go, wow, I really get the different options and I can see the different options. Like abstract bliss, wonder what that means, you know? Uh, 299. So I'm guessing that this is your more in depth, like this is the one where you really go into a lot of detail. Um, whereas your other ones, like $55, those ones I'm assuming are less content, hence the pricing difference. Uh, so it could even be worth calling out this one here is this because you say that this is a popular breakthrough class I wonder what you mean by breakthrough class like people break through their creative blocks or um, it's a great starting place to break through into becoming an artist like I, I'd be curious what that means first of all um, and then um, yeah should we call that one out should it be like um, you know, you might want to start here if you really want to um, get all the fundamentals for starting as an abstract painter. Um, and then once you've done that, you might want to explore some of the um, smaller, more specific ones where you can learn a particular skill of something that might um, call to you. Like you might want to do mandalas. You might be really interested in the leaf painting. Um, some of these are 14 day challenges as well so it's like yeah it's just sort of understanding like how is somebody because it's obviously it's difficult for you because you are so close to this you've created every one of your workshops it's like you it, it would be difficult I think for you and for anybody else who's listening like you know who is doing this work creating the content to see it from fresh eyes and to think like how is this being received by someone is this clear you know they've got so many options do they have all day to review um six nine twelve thirteen fourteen different classes to figure out which one is right for them now knowing you know artists maybe they do maybe they're just like oh my gosh i found the faith side i just need to you know go into every page and explore every detail yes there will be those people but let's also make it easy for them um with more summary perhaps and i just think yeah cleaning up this layout is going to help a ton with that um, I don't want you to lose that beautiful vibe that you have, but I think that there's another way to translate it where it's not like text and image are competing so much, if that makes sense. Okay, I think I've clarified that now. So yeah, love the way you did live and instant. That makes sense. Um, although, what day do we today? May. So that one might need to go. That might just be something you need to go uh, bring away. Let's have a look. So here, once again, you're doing the, the video first, but I get that. It's not a, you know, super high video, so that's okay. Claim your space, start per se, uh, painting, pursue your creative genes. You've got this. I love that. And that's a really good example there of how you're really speaking directly to that visitor, that budding artist that wants to get into this work. Um, but overall, I would say that this width of text is once again too wide. We want to be really conscious of pulling in that text. So it's like it's OK if it's this big text in this heading. Like I don't have too much of a problem with that, although I would still reduce it a little bit, maybe to that at the point of, the, of here. But when it gets into this little text, I'm like, no, -uh, I'm not reading that. Like so I really want you to be conscious of that so that um, you yeah, we want people to read what you put down otherwise what's the point like it would probably actually read a lot clearer if it was just this heading and we got rid of all this little text that no one is potentially reading um my uh, variety of ways to get you painting and grow your like this is your bolded text like maybe that could be the only other lie like just really think about how you can simplify that awaken your creativity fall in love with the creative process and grab my free guide while you're here. I don't know if people are reading that, like they're just gonna go straight to the guide. Once again here, I feel like this has become muted and I don't know 
what's going on here but there's like three different tones here that almost look similar like we were talking about before I really think this free guide needs to be adjusted um as you can see here you've got your color photo and I actually really love the way that you know you've brought your color photos in here but it feels like the intensity of that color like it's been muted I'm wondering what happened or why that occurred but and once again I sort of feel like the text and photo are sort of competing a little bit here you can do some more text styling so instead of everything being in the same font the same color the same size like you can really play around with that a lot more um, to get people to actually read it and yeah I just feel like there's too many columns here um, I just want to see that simplified, not so many columns. Uh, begin today, claim your free guide. That's good. Maybe the button can be a little bit more contrasty, like instead of it just being an, an outline, it could be a solid color that contrasts with your background color so that nobody misses that call to action. But I almost feel like there's so many columns here that I'm like, and then the text is not really styled to the point where I'm like, I'm not reading this bit. So then all I'm reading is begin to like claim your free guide. Like I just feel like you, it's going to be so much more powerful if you simplify how you're approaching that. Okay. Click any of my images below for more information about each online workshop. Does that go without saying? Maybe like I would probably not do that in um, uppercase and so wide, like, because I think people are going to miss that. Um, go at your own pace with instant access yeah okay um, yeah I don't know I don't know if that's necessary I feel like that's sort of self-explanatory to, to, to um, mention that um, but yeah so we've basically talked about that now we've talked about this again it's I would say it's a little bit easier to read when it goes to two columns here and it's a little bit wider, but it's a really big section there as well. So same comments apply there. And then you've got your beautiful photos. But I feel like people hate to click and scroll. Like this is something I mentioned in my other video. Um, people love to skim scan scrolling, you know, scrolling on their phones with their finger or scrolling with your mouse. I don't think people like to click. It's like it takes so long to see the images. Oh, my gosh. I am getting tired. Like that's, I think how people feel. So I would avoid like these slider type, you know, manual clicking slider ones. And even, you know, ones where it does it for you, which actually I think it does. Um, it's pretty slow. Like someone's not gonna sit there and wait for it to, to keep going, right? So I would ditch this approach of the clickable slider business. I just think, no, like I would rather see like, here are some beautiful inspirational images. And I know you're probably trying to just condense that so it's not so overwhelming on the page, but there's not really much else on the page. I think you could have um, some beautiful images. Like you've obviously got your video here. Um, but yeah, maybe there's a way that you can bring a beautiful collage in or something like that, where it's not like you have to click to see it all, like you can see it all visually on the page. Um, yeah, I just feel like I love being able to see more of these really gorgeous, beautiful photos of you and your artwork, but I don't want to wait for this slider is my, my <laughs> feedback here. Okay, so we kind of got a little distracted here. Um, now moving on to your book, um, great to have the video there. Um, maybe we want to see a photo of the book. I know we do get to see the um, image here, but it's like it is a bit of a commitment to click play, to wait for it to load. I mean, it didn't take that long to load and everything, but um, it is a bit of a process. Um, I would be quite keen to see an image of the book and just to kind of get that clarity, um, potentially rather than just, oops, all the text here. Oh, couldn't find the page. Interesting. Okay, so a really good thing that you can do is like um, if you just Google broken link checker, I think that's all you need to do, you'll be able to find um, uh a tool that you can use, so broken link checker, there we go. Yeah, this is one I was trying the other day. Because if you've got an old site, this is another recommendation that I think is really helpful for people. Just pop it in and 
um, okay, into the security. And because if you've got an old site, this can happen really easily. Um, okay, we'll just start with the first one, distinct broken links. Um, and it will go through and actually tell us um, where those have occurred so that you can spot them because sometimes it's not practical to like I mean obviously you could go through and manually check every single link but obviously that's time consuming so just to clarify this link here is broken um okay let's keep going down here and there's no other links here to it yeah so no one's able to really access the book in this section um so it's just something to keep in mind um then we go down here, see what my transformational retreats are like. Um, oh yeah, I did notice with this one here, and this may not be a problem for you, um, but I did notice that I think it says 2017. Maybe it was your second video. But I love all the video content, the um, music, it really sets the scene. Yeah, 2017, like, I don't know whether you wanna like go in there and actually cut that just so it feels a little bit more current or whether that doesn't actually matter. I mean, totally up to you there. Um, what I do notice is like, it takes quite a long time to get to any painting images or video content. I think there might be some towards the end. Um, or maybe, or maybe it's more like, yeah. See, I would kind of like to see a little bit more of that. Like, I know you probably don't want to go in and do the whole process of editing the video again, but if you were to do it in the future, I would really love to see like a little bit more of the artwork and a, in conjunction with the beautiful Moroccan imagery, just to really set that scene that it is really like um, a painting retreat, not just like, stock images of Morocco, but maybe that was the first one before you'd ever done it, it before. Now you probably have so many um, beautiful images from past retreats, because I know you repeat the similar locations year on year. So that could be interesting. Let's have a look at your retreats. Let's have a look at how the broken link checker is going. Okay, so it has found, oh, it's still going, and it's found quite a lot of broken links. So maybe I can send you this report. I don't know if it's going to give me, I can probably take a screenshot, so hopefully I won't forget to do this. But this is a really great um, tool for anybody that has an older website or is not sure if, um, if all their links are accurate. Because the last thing you want is to have broken links because it just doesn't convey that level of like, your site is put together, like, you know, with that level of professionalism, but it's so, so easy to do, isn't it? And, you know, like I've been there, um, I've had a recent website refresh, so I did the link checker, it was all good. So I'm like, yay, but I'm sure my old site was absolutely terrible for this. <laughs> so um, yeah, everyone who's listening, go get a broken link checking um, report done. It's free uh, and super easy to be able to assess that. Okay, where were we? Now I want to check out the retreats. Let's have a, oh, I think I already clicked on them. Yeah, I love that. Um, wherever you go becomes part of you somehow. Like, I love that as well. This text here, I'm not really reading. It's too much, a lot of capitals. Um, you just, I, I think we need, um, I mean, I guess what I try and do is like, the first line, let's bring that a little bit bigger. Let's give that slightly different styling. So imagine a small group of women coming together for a pocket of time with a shared intention. Like, um, you know, maybe it's one or two lines that is called out in a different color, is bolded, um, you know, it, it, it is in a slightly bigger size. And then we, ha I guess what you need here is more line breaks as well. I don't want to see a huge paragraph or copy. I think that right, breaking that, one paragraph out into smaller sections will help with website readability. Um, so yeah, this section here I feel needs a little work to um, make it more readable. Then we have your beautiful images. We've got a lot of sold out ones. Sold out, sold out, sold out. And if you click on them, are you able to see? Because people might want to see the past retreats just to get more of a sense of what happened. So I think there's no problem with including that. Um, but I, rec 
recall there being two retreats. Oh, so this one must be sold out that was um, on your home page. So if we go back up here. Okay. So this one here is obviously sold out, but you may have forgotten to mention that um, on your home page. Yes, sold out. So whether it's worth putting maybe like if it's sold out do you really want that in that prime real estate of your home page so it could be worth reassessing that and removing that just so it's really clear that hey there's just one option left from there you may want to segment it so it's like current you know registration open options and everything else that's sold out just so that there's it's really prominent like the ones that they can actually sign up for is the focal point and then um everything else is just like a fun exploration if you're considering um going on a retreat or you want to see what the um the you know moroccan one or, or one of these other ones where um, it's not currently being run like just to think like oh in the future obviously you're going to do them again so let me explore what would be my ideal destination if I'm going to make this investment of going on this amazing retreat um so blah 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 blah, blah. we've got all the different options like this is 2016 <sighs> like that's a lot of like it's just taking up so much real estate here and going so far back I wonder if that's worth it versus bringing in some more information like once again I'm not really reading this I would say because I feel like it's too much um without more styling and imagery and, and kind of maybe doing a two columns like one side's a photo one side's an image like I just think there's more that we can do there to make this um, more engaging to read but what if we could take bits like this life-changing retreats, transformational experiences. You know, I would like to see some more of this information, I think, and these gorgeous photos even, probably above some of these ones here. What I would say is like, let's make um, the one that's registering now, I want that, if there's one or more, to be really clear. And then maybe you also include like one that's still upcoming but is sold out, maybe, I'm not sure. But then I kind of want to see like, you know, paint this picture of me, like what to expect from a retreat in general, even if it's not the one that um, you're registering for right now. Like, let's just paint the picture. Let's put lots of gorgeous imagery in without the slider. Um, I mean, I love this photo here. Like that is really painting the picture of the sisterhood, the community that people are gonna get, which we're not really seeing here. So I feel like that almost, I wanna bring that forward. Um, so I feel like, you know, when it comes to a workshop from 2016, 2017, like I don't feel, like maybe we can put that at the bottom of the page. Like, do you want to explore the past retreats and here you can do a deep dive, but I almost want to use this, this retreats landing page to really um, paint the picture of the retreats, really sell it without making someone click to view a particular retreat, but obviously I'm sure you go into a lot more depth about each one. Um, yeah. And I feel like even with this layout, there's a lot that you could do. Like if we're thinking about this as a sales page, one of the key things that I, you know, really promote, no matter what page it is, in fact, is really segmenting our sections into um, uh, clear chunks. So instead of it just being like, here's all the text dumped on the page with a small line, I really want to see ways that we can um, have like a full width section maybe that's like, even if it's really subtle, like a super light um, off-white or super light pink or gray or something. It doesn't have to be like a big, giant, colorful block, right? But, um, or, or it could be a photo block section. And then we have a white section and we alternate between like color or like photo, white section you know color photo white section and that way it segments it in a way where it's really easy to read because you can skim and scan and you can see the content more bunched up together but it's also visually interesting so it's not like um uh, just 
everything on the page and, and then it's like oh do I really want to read this you know and this is exciting stuff and this offering is amazing like I would love to go on one of these retreats one day maybe when my boys are older uh, but honestly it's like yeah there's so much more that you could do here like I can't obviously <laughs> I'm probably been talking for a long time now no doubt I always say to myself with these like oh you know it'd probably be relatively short and then I can't stop talking because like you know there's always so many ideas um but yeah I hope that this has been helpful so far I love that you've got photos here to pair with your testimonials I recall seeing another I don't know what it was let me go into this as well um maybe it was a class where you didn't have photos with your testimonials maybe it was our trees um no, not that one. Anyway, I would just highly recommend you get those photos with all your testimonials if possible. There was something somewhere where I did see that you were missing that. Maybe it was online. No, abstract bricks. Yeah, here we go. I wonder if you can pair photos with that. I think that that would be more powerful. Just mentioning that as a just little aside. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could go on and on about the details of this, but overall, let me just try and pull this back into a little bit of a summary. I feel like number one takeaway is um, let's put the reader first, especially when it comes to the home page, because that's their landing page. Let's really draw that ideal client in that is a woman who's looking to step into their artwork again, feel inspired and embrace the creativity that they know they were made for. Like that's a powerful statement. Um, yes, this is your brand. Yes, this is you. Yes, you are infused throughout, but I really want you to make sure that that opening statement really makes that um, your um, ideal student slash client slash retreat member, whatever you want to call them, or just that your audience, your viewer, I want them to be the hero. How do you help them? How do you solve their problem? Like what difference are you making for them? Like why should they care uh, beyond seeing your beautiful artwork? And I know that that's compelling and that probably feels like enough, but I want you to deepen it further and go that one step further, even though everything that you do within itself is compelling. Like for all you artists out there, for all you creatives, um, yes, the quality of your work is one component, but I want you to go deeper than that. I want you to go further. That's not enough. Or maybe it is enough to have a successful business if you're really talented, but don't you want to take it to that next level? And I think really engaging with that person that you really feel um, like it's your purpose to help. Um, that's what we want to do here. So that's my number one takeaway. My number two takeaway for you is thinking about your visual branding. Um, uh, potentially, you haven't delved too much into this just because like, obviously your artwork is so powerful and so visual that maybe you've leaned on that and thought like that's enough. But I feel like as I look through it, I'm just wondering is there that alignment um, when it comes to the elements that aren't photographs of your work? Like definitely when it comes to your work, obviously super aligned, super gorgeous, like, oh, perfect. Um, when it comes to the more muted colors, does that align? Maybe it does. Like I do love that color, don't get me wrong. And I know that it aligns to your clothes here, which is a really great element to have. And I love that chair, by the way. Gosh, that's a gorgeous chair. Um, like everything about that photo is perfect. Um, but do we want to, if you are a lover of bright color, like I just feel like in terms of the, the, the elements where we've got blocks of text, oh, sorry, blocks of like, text or blocks of color or, um, yeah, like examples here. I'm like, this is so muted. This doesn't, to me, from an outsider's perspective, I don't know that it feels like you and the vibe of your artwork. So I would really consider that, um, you know, thinking about how how you can infuse little details. Um, I have an example of that. Like your texture work, bringing it in without it feeling too busy, like little bits of your artwork, little details, you know, that we can pull out that feel like they're on brand for you. Um, like I do with a lot of artists, like with Kelly Ray stuff as well. I'm pretty sure you guys are um, friends. Um, like I would love to see little touches of that without 
overdoing it and making it feel too busy. And there's a real um, finesse that needs to go into that with to not make it too messy, of course, um, when we're dealing with that. But I would love to see, um, yeah, more of you come into the elements that aren't just photos of your work when, we, when we're talking about the website, the design, the color palette. Um, I would like to see more consistency when it comes to your font usage because as we've identified you've got a lot of different styles and some of them feel more elegant and some of them feel more quirky and it's like aligning to what actually makes sense to you um bringing more color maybe into these call to action buttons things like that that would be really interesting like you've got so many gorgeous colors that you work with and i've and maybe you thought, oh, I don't want to compete with my artwork, which I get because a lot of artists think I need to use black just so that um, I, I let my work speak. Um, and I was like that too when I started my very first website and brand. I was like, I want my work to speak for itself. I don't really need to be all markety and like, you know, I want my branding to be very subtle and just kind of sits in the background. But then I came to realize that really what I was trying to create here was a brand within itself that actually speaks to um, a person that I'm trying to sell to and I'm trying to not just sell to you but serve and really help and I think that's what you want to do too so I would be curious to see how you can um, bring more of those elements into your website and I still think your work can speak and it will speak even more like that's the exciting part I think when you can bring in those little elements that um, bring more depth to the website and feel sort of more layered um, so that's my tip number two I think or was it three um my next tip is around um how you present your um classes uh really where is it classes might be worth having a link I guess you've got different ones you've got classes and you've got um yes yeah, so you've got no one where it's like view all the classes oh, except up here you've got it up here um okay so yeah, so my next tip is really thinking about how can you present your classes in a way that helps someone who has never been on your website before, doesn't know anything about what you do, to really understand like which one they feel drawn to. Yes, it will come through in the images, but maybe you can do text with it, cleaning up the look so maybe the text and the images aren't competing as much would be another recommendation. Um, and, you know, the different use of, um, well, you do have, I guess, consistency with the fonts, except for here. But I don't know, like this, this font style to me, I would probably steer away from uh, just because it feels a little bit more um, like maybe, like I feel like this, I, I feel like those fonts were used like quite a few years back and were very popular. Now I feel like font styles have evolved and this probably hasn't kept up and is maybe looking less um, elegant than maybe like the sophistication of your work, if that makes sense, or maybe representing, maybe you want to find fonts that represent more of a bohemian style. I don't know that they represent that bohemian look to me. Maybe they do in a way, but I don't know. I just feel like I want something that's a little thinner and a little... Um, more elegant instead of like that super chunky look and maybe you wanted that chunky look because you need that text to be bold to stand out on those photos um, but maybe like we need to reconsider how we're doing that text so that would be another one of my recommendations cleaning up the look of this and cleaning up and clarifying um why someone should pick each one of these workshops and if there's any you know further guidance that you can give people maybe pulling out this you know your big juicy course um, and, and clarifying the difference there so maybe it has more prominence perhaps uh, that could be something to explore um, so I feel like those were my main recommendations. Obviously, I haven't looked at everything. Like your Instagram is stunning and you don't do a lot of branded visuals so there's not a lot that I can speak to there but I just think yeah your work is amazing um, and I would really love for you to have a website that truly reflected that like a hundred percent and also really was really super clear 
Because I guess that's the tough thing. You know, as artists, as creatives, we want all that work to be showcased and maybe we don't have as much of the skill when it comes to um, being super clear and concise. That's the hardest thing when it comes to branding, how to take all of this information that you really want to speak about and distilling it down. But we need to remember that people don't read every line of your website and people are definitely not going to read it if we to present it in a way that um, makes it more challenging, if that makes sense. So I think that there are some refinements that you can make here, but, um, you know, even without these refinements, I can see why people absolutely love what you do and why you've had the success that you have because your work does speak for itself. Like I think, you know, you're already working at such a great level and it's just like taking things to that next level. Like that is the potential that is there for you. Um, and that's exciting. And I hope that you are able to take something from what I've said here to be able to apply it to your um, branding and your website to really step into that next um, level and really embodying who you are, what you do, your style, um, and letting that infuse in everything that you present out into the world, not just your artwork, but also all of your marketing. So I hope that that helps. This was so much fun. I could just stare at your work all day, I swear to God. Um, but I can't because I better get back to my um, my client work. But this was so much fun. I hope this was helpful. And I can't wait to do the next one. So, oh, yeah, just before I go away, if you would like a review of your website, this will probably only be able to go on for a super limited time. Um, but it, they're a lot of fun. And um, it's a great way to get that um, bit of feedback from an outside set of eyes to go, is it clear? Is it aligned? Um, and obviously I'm only going off um, the little bit of information that you share with me. So there may be some areas where you go, you know what, she's a little bit off there and that's totally fine too. But it's a great way to kind of um, get you thinking, get you outside of being stuck in your own head and everything you think you know about what you're presenting to just see an outsider's perspective. So yeah, I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to share the next one. All right, bye.